Hi guys, welcome back to 30 Days to Your First Website Design, a Touch Plus Premium course. I'm Ian Yates and today we're going to sort out our navigation. Now we'll begin as always by taking a quick look at what we're going to cover in this video. Firstly, I'd like to apologise because I woke up this week with a head cold and I can't seem to shake it. Now, I'm hiding it as best I can but you're undoubtedly going to be able to hear my bunged up sound effects during this video so uh, I apologise in advance. Now that said, we'll start off by examining a few navigation examples and then we're going to jump right into our PSD and continue with the layout by adding our primary navigation. Then I'm going to set you an assignment before we tackle the next video in the series. Okay, so let's look at some examples of global or primary navigation. Now, the examples we're going to look at demonstrate very different styles but all essentially complying to what we've spoken about regarding their position. They're all going to be either vertical along the top left of the page, sometimes even fixed there, irrespective of the page scrolling, or horizontal, either in the top right or top and centered. Now these are areas of initial focus, and primary navigation is usually found there because it's so darn important. Without easily located navigation, no one's going to look further into your site. Now, the first example here we have is jeansausageshop.com. Uh, an example of the vertically aligned top left navigation uh, beautifully styled with various typographical effects here just to be like uh, the actual menu of a butcher's that's a, that's a great example that one next up we have tinkering monkey which shows you the top and centered uh, type of primary navigation and then there's wigolia.com uh, which is a similar example to what we're working towards uh, with primary navigation position in the top right. Uh, now even more obscure methods of navigation um, such as on heartshapedwork.com and polyesterstudio.com and even uh, like this example of grungy drop-down menus these still apply to the uh, positioning standards that we've already discussed. Now if I refer back to our mock-up you recall that the primary navigation we planned was placed in the header at the top right. So let's add that to our PSD now. I'll jump into Photoshop and open up our layout file. Now I have to apologize again already uh, because in the last video I began our layout PSD by opening up a 12 column grid. Now it's incorrect because my design is based on a 16 column grid as you can see correctly here displayed. So I've updated the source files for the previous video, that won't be an issue, an issue, but just bear in mind we're working with 16 columns here. Now I've also uh, widened our canvas to give us a bit of space for working in. I'm literally going to image and canvas size. We've now, we're now working with uh, 1160 pixels of width, uh, so that just makes things a little less squashed up. Uh, and I've also added um, a generic logo which I made in Illustrator and I've added to our file as a smart object here in the header folder. Uh, now let's just quickly add our very simple navigation uh, by firstly adding a group to our header group and we'll rename that menu. No we won't, we'll rename it navigation. That's more sensible isn't it? Okay. Now we'll take our type tool here making sure that we've selected Arial, which is a system font, nice and standard, bold, 14 pixels. Uh, actually, I don't want it as white. I'm going to choose uh, the pale green that we chose in our swatches last time. I'm just going to make that slightly paler again, a bit more towards the gray for background, in fact. And we're going to uh, actually, we're working within the first column uh, of our layout, so ignoring this as a sort of padding element, we're going to sort of begin our layout on this first gutter here. So let's just put something generic in, such as home, three, four, five, and then perhaps an about us link, one, two, three, four, five. Services, one, two, three, four, five, and contact. Okay, that's fairly clear. Now, if we just get rid of our grids and our guides, that's actually not very clear. So I'm going to alter the color, make it darker, because that total lack of contrast isn't very user friendly. 
Okay, that's pale but legible, so that's fine. We'll center it um, vertically with our logo. Okay, now it's as simple as that. That's nice and straightforward. Simple. It uh, it works well. Um, what we also need to cater for are the various states of our menu. Now, when you become used to working with HTML and CSS web design in general, you'll become used to understanding that you're going to need to visualize the various states of various elements. Now, in our menu, for example, we're going to need a hover state and probably even a selected state. So, depending on the page that we're currently looking at, that menu item would be selected. So, we'll illustrate that by firstly darkening our text. In fact, we could even go for this dark green shade here, which would match it up to the band at the top. That's probably sensible. Okay, so clearly having selected or hovering over home then. What we could also do is if we select this band at the top and we duplicate it by dragging that down there, we're going to call this hover state. And we'll drag that into our navigation folder. I'm just going to zoom out so we've got a little more room to play with. Uh, I hit Command and T to transform it, and let's now just drag it in so that it aligns above our currently selected or hovered link. And there we go. That just illustrates to us what we're doing. Click on that and I apply the transformation. Now we're going to alter the color so that it is highlighted like so. Double click that to examine the actual pixels. I can see it's going to need to be a little wider. It doesn't have to be exact because that will all be done in our actual CSS. Okay, so that becomes fairly clear now. We have our menu and we have a hover and selected state. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to Command S, save that. All right. Now we'll jump back into our presentation because I have some further reading for you. I'm pleased to hear. There we go. I'd like you to take a look at this article on six revisions. It examines conventions, usability, and the practicalities of navigation. It's a great article. Now before we jump into the next video, I have an assignment for you. This is going to be a bit of a theme in the coming videos as we're working together to build our design. I want you to update your file as I go. So in this case, add the primary navigation to the header section. This should be fairly program agnostic too. If you're working in Fireworks or Illustrator or some other application, you should be able to follow along just as easily. Now next time on 30 days to your first website design, we're going to take a look at web typography. I'm Ian Yates and from all of us here at Touch Plus, thanks for watching.